chapter 12, we are talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, we have already covered the power gifts and the revelation gifts this week. We're going to cover the vocal gifts. So go in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we're reading our foundation text again in relation to the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, I will receive our offering at the end of the service. Hallelujah. All righty. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And, all, and there are differences of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, or special faith as the Amplified Bible says, to another the gifts of healing. But we know from verse 28 it refers to gifts of healings. <clears throat> so we understand there are, there are multiple gifts of healings. There's different gifts of healings by the same Spirit. <laughs> to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. Or actually, discerning of spirits. Uh, to another, kinds of tongues. The word divers is not in the Greek. Kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work with that one and self, same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Hallelujah. So we have here, uh, as we've said, in the onset, this particular um, teaching um, in reference to the gifts of the Spirit. The, uh, the Greek says there in the first one, now concerning spiritual, spiritual gifts, the word gifts is not in the Greek, it's italicized, meaning it's not in the original language added by the translators for the, for the purpose of what they thought would aid the reader in understanding. But really the, words, the word there uh, translated spiritual is um, a pneumaticon. And I probably didn't pronounce that quite right, but pneuma, uh, maticon, which, you know, pneuma means breath, wind, spirit. So spiritual, the actual is plural, so spirituals. And you can literally translate this particular phrase as uh, now concerning things of and pertaining to the Spirit. Okay, now concerning things of and pertaining to the Spirit, spirituals. So uh, of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. He says, I would not have you ignorant. And then, and then so he goes down here and begins to list um, different manifestations of the Spirit. Because in one place he calls them gifts, another place he calls them uh, administrations, and another calls them operations. So they're really not all gifts. They are the, they are the, diff, they're the uh, manifestations of the Spirit. And, um, <clears throat> and for that care, now, one, one problem with using the word gifts in our uh, Western mindset is we think God gives these to people and they just run around with them all the time. You know, you're, you're, you know you've got tongues, you've got the gift of tongues. Only, you know, only certain people have the gift of tongues. And, um, and you're going to run around with that. Well, God may use you along a certain line, but they're divided as He wills. They're manifest as He wills. And that manifesto as you would. Now, you, you can govern whether or not they manifest, but they're not at your will in that sense that you could just say, well, I don't want to speak in tongues and have an interpretation and have a Holy Ghost service. You just can't do that. They have to be at the unction of the Spirit. Amen? So, uh, for, for the sake of teaching, we divided these into three categories. We talked about the power gifts which is the gifts of healings, the working of miracles, the gift of special faith, the revelation, what empower gifts, what? They do something. Um, the revelation gifts or manifestations, which was the uh, discerning of spirits, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. They reveal something. And then tonight we're going to talk about the vocal manifestations of the spirit or the vocal gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. And um, look into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if you will. Chapter 14, this is just a little bit over, verse 26. It says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, 
every one of you, I mean, half a doctrine, half a tongue, half a revelation, half an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Now, Paul had spent the first part of this chapter talking about tongues, talking about interpretation, talking about prophecy, talking about uh, the purpose, uh, you know, of edification, the, the reason for these things in a church service. Now, understand that there is a public manifestation as, as what we call the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit of tongues. There is a private, um, prayerful um, manifestation in the life of the believer of praying in the Spirit, praying with the Spirit, communing with God um, for, as for singular edification. Public manifestation is for public edification. Private manifestation is for singular or individual edification. Um, <clears throat> the body of Christ is edified when, when there is a manifestation of what we would refer to as the gift of speaking in tongues when it is interpreted. In other words, there needs to be an interpretation to the body when there is a manifestation of, of public ministry of the gift of tongues for the purpose of edifying the body. Um, prophecy Remember, when Paul said, "Prophecy is greater than he that prophesieth is greater than he that speaketh in tongues, unless he interpret." So we know this: that speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues is equivalent to prophecy in in a man in a public service. Okay. So what Paul does then is he comes along here and gets down about verse twenty-six and kind of changes over from the purpose of tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy to the order of the service. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we know from, from reading Paul's writings that the church of Corinth was very zealous of spiritual things, uh, extremely zealous, zealous to a point of causing confusion and disruption rather than blessing. Now, um, I, I have no problem with having a service where the Spirit of God uh, manifests himself in a way that people are, you know, and ember with joy and running and shouting and, you know, I mean, whatever. But, uh, you know, you can't do that every service. There's a right, there's, you know, it, it needs to be spirit-led, spirit-inspired. Amen? Uh, we don't need to be just running every service just to run, just for the fun of it, you know. Um, particularly, you know, um, I've seen services where one service, um, the anointing in, in, in the building just you, was, you could, you sense it, and, and people just began to run. They were, well, they run, well, they're running with joy. They're running with, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're just over, caught up in the spirit of, of, of God and, and run. And the next service, they try to do it, and it's like pouring wet water on the whole congregation. There's a difference between being inspired of the spirit and just doing it because you think it'd be a cool thing to do, or we want to prove that we're really cool. Well, we don't have to prove anything. I want to, I want to flow with him. I want to be in the flow of what he's after and what he's doing. Sometimes people need to do stuff just to get them out of their, their comfort zone and get them over into the things of God. So Paul moves into here in verse 26 and begins to establish some order, particularly in the lines of the vocal gifts. Now let me say this. The reason that there's more misuse of the vocal gifts is because they're the easiest to yield to. I mean, it's easier to yield to speaking in tongues than it is to work a miracle. I mean, if axe heads floating, you know, so when I, when I, oh, oh, can I say, maybe say it a different way. It's easier to mimic them than any of the other manifestations and it not be God. So, thus you can have more misuse of those or more things in a service that are out of order under the guise of those things. Now, we don't want to jump in, you know, when teaching along these lines, what we don't want to do is draw back and get so um, orderly that you, that, you know, Brother Hagin used to say, I'd rather have the, I'd rather have, now we old Pentecostals used to use this term. If you're old Pentecostal, you've heard this term. Um, I'd rather have a little wildfire and a move of the Spirit of God than the order of a graveyard and no move at all. All right. And I see growing up Pentecostal, you know, some people get, you know, you, especially young Christians, are, they're, you know, and listen, sometimes you need those young Christians to stoke the fire in them old, dried up, you know, prune Christians. 
you know, who had gotten baptized in vinegar three, three or four times, you know, and uh, took, a, took a dip in the, in the lake of, I don't want to do anything anymore, and come to church with wet wood, all right? Um, so we don't want to go that extra. I, just, I was reading a website of a local church the other day, and they were, they were you know, they, they, they believe in the manifestation of the Spirit, but they don't speak in tongues in their services because the Holy Ghost wouldn't interrupt himself. Thought, you know, I, I, Paul wrote about order. But then, you know, they allow him to, they allow that to happen in some type of after service meetings. So you're telling the Holy Spirit he can't manifest in the main service the way he wants to because you, you figured it all out. You know, I was like, oh, come on. No, there's Paul wrote to give order to how the service should run, but he didn't want to stifle the spirit. He wanted to bring order to the excesses. So you can go, you can jump out of this ditch. Well, oh, bless God, we don't have excess. So we jump over here. We don't have anything. Well, then, you know, um, well, we just preach the word and walk in love. I'm going to tell you something. If you walk in love, you want people to get help however they can get help. And if God wants to minister through the gifts of the Spirit and get them help, then you better be open to that. Well, we can only get them help through the Word. No, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Meaning this, that not that you don't need the Word, you only need the Spirit. It means, because uh, I'll tell you something else, the Spirit without the Word, you get flaky. And the Word without Spirit, you get dry. You need them working together. They went everywhere preaching the Word, the Word, the Lord working with them, confirming the Word with signs following through the Holy Ghost. So Paul begins to endeavor to bring order to a place there was chaos. Amen. Now be careful about overemphasizing uh, certain things in this passage of Scripture to the point that you make it a legalistic law. Okay? Paul's trying to understand why he's writing and who he's writing to. He's writing to a church that he wrote and begins, you come behind and no gift. Amen? So he says this here. He says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm? Now, different translation says a little bit different, kind of gives you the different idea that when all y'all get together, each one of you could have. Everybody there could have a psalm. They could have a doctrine. They could have a, a, a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation. Listen what he says. Let all things be done to edify it. The purpose of what we're doing when we're yielding to the manifestation of the Spirit is to bring edification to the body of Christ. Or to people. Because if you're working against the work, healings or working miracles, you can be ministering to an unsaved person. You're still looking to bring edification to them. Okay? If a man speak in an unknown tongue, now, now understand what he's talking about. When you come together, now he's changed gears. And he's talking about a church service and the order of that church service. Bringing correction to an, because if, if you read, the Corinthians thought tongues was the highest gift. And they were all just, I mean, they were just speaking in tongues right and left, man. They were just said, get in there and get after it. Woo, praise God. Because it's the easiest to yield to. It's the easiest manifestation to yield to. Okay? Um, but look, notice it says here, the, the purpose of everything is to, that all the things to be done and to edify. If a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it by be, be by two or three at the most, and that by course, and that one, in other words, in order, and that in order. And let one interpret. Didn't necessarily mean one person interpret, but let each thing that's done be interpreted. Okay? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Didn't say for them not to speak in tongues, to speak themselves. All right? Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. In other words, you've got four or five pro people there who are prophets. Don't, don't every one of them have to prophesy at that service. Don't every one of them have to minister in that service. Let it be about two or three. He's giving, you understand, these are general guidelines he's given here. These are not stuck in the mud, hardcore. You understand the context of how he's saying this. Let it be two or three at the most. Well, why not the fourth person did it? Oh, that can't be God. No. I understand what Paul's trying to do. Who it's written to, why it was written. And understand that he's talking in generals here. He's not talking in, you know, if, so, if the fourth person speak, he'll be burned in hell for violating the Word of God. That's not what he's after here. He's trying to bring an order. Um, let him speak. And the other judge, if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. 
For ye may all prophesy one by one, that uh, all may learn and all be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of saints. And, and, and um, uh, in all churches of the saints. Now, think about this. You know, the first one's got something, and the another one has something. Let the first one be quiet, let the other guy give it. Okay? The spirits of the prophets are subject to the, In other words, God don't make you flow in the gifts. God doesn't make you prophesy. Well, I just couldn't help it. See, you can't, well, brother, right in the middle of service, if, you know, you stand up. Now, can because I was remember reading this, this website, I'm thinking, you're, you're, you're missing the mark. You're making such a legalistic law out of, we can't have anybody manifest a vocal gift in our services because the Holy Spirit won't interrupt himself. I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. The Holy Spirit may change directions in a service. He can do that, you know. I said he can do that, you know. But we just, we've kind of had kind of a thing here. You know that if, it's the, if you think you've got something and I'm ministering or whatever, you just kind of hold your, your, your hand up or not, not like this, but just kind of, and if, I, if I acknowledge you and say, go ahead, fine. If I don't, then, it, then, then since I'm speaking and, I'm, and I believe I'm following the Spirit of God, it may not be the right time. You may, since you have something, it may not be the right time. Sometimes I'll go five, ten minutes and when I, oh, now what did you have there? Oh, you got to give right when you got it. No. God wanted to order. Amen? Amen? And we're all learning. So we may be learning how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit or manifest something or, or yield to something. Uh, so, so in a church service, it's just real easy. You know, just... And it's like, it's like, say if you're in a big service with a lot of people and you're back in the back corner and you, you start hollering out something in that situation, the people way up front can't hear a thing you're saying. They hear somebody in the back of the building going, you know, and you can't hear a thing they're saying. Well, see, God, God knows that. So, um, understand we're spiritual people. We can pick up on, we, we're subject. You can pick up on something. I can pick up on something. You can have, you, I've had many times that dad was prophesying and I was getting the same things as he was prophesying or right before he was saying, I was getting that in my spirit. Why? Because the, I was under the same Holy Ghost. But my spirit is subject to me, and, or, or, you know, I don't have to try to do something just because I, I sense something. Okay? So Paul here <clears throat> was trying to bring order. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm trying to look for a couple things here in these notes, these extra notes that I have. Okay. Notice here it said... Paul said, here he said, if, you know, let the others, let the others judge. Let the other judge. Really, the word other is others in the Greek, plural. Let prophets speak by two or three and let the others judge. In the manifestation of the, of the vocal gifts, there should be order. Okay? Now, if we're sitting here worshiping the God, we're in, in worship service and we're all just, we're singing songs and, you, and, you're, and you're just worshiping the Lord in other tongues, it's no big deal. That's fine. That's not, that's not disruptive. That's not taking over the service. You're not trying to get recognized. You're not trying to get something that's going to be interpreted. You're just corporately with other people, but you're worshiping the Lord privately. You're not trying to, so that's okay. All right? But for the purpose of speaking out to the congregation. Now, we want people to yield to the Holy Ghost. You have a, if you have an unction, we want you to be able to give that. And so we, we endeavor, um, you know, I have people sometimes raise their finger, hands and I'll, I'll, I'll give them the microphone. Sometimes I won't. I just sense it's not the right thing to do. Well, I have to, I, ultimately if I miss it, I have to answer to the Lord. Okay. Um, but I, ultimately I'm responsible. So if I don't sense it's the right time or the right thing or, you know, and sometimes people, well, I just thought I had, well, that's okay. That's fine. Doesn't mean you're, you're a bad Christian. Amen. Now. So Paul is setting order. So people will take and, and, and take things like this and they'll go build big, huge, you know, whatever's on it, you know, big, huge, you know, uh, statements of faith. I, I was reading this particular thing the other day and I was like, 
Okay, you're one of those people who think you're the only ones who walk in love. You're the only ones who have got it figured out how everything's supposed to flow. And, you know, and you didn't, didn't, they don't believe in positive confession because you can't bend God, bend God to the human will and mind. That's not what faith is about. As a matter of fact, I got scripture that totally countermands what they're trying to say. Concerning my promises, command ye me. And literally the Hebrew says, demand me. So, there you go. Do you want to argue about Scripture or just come up with your little cute little sayings, you know? Um, hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> now, tongues for public service are for the purpose of being interpreted. You don't just stand up and see that. Well, how do I know? You have to have a sense of the Holy Spirit. Um, That is a, a knowing in your spirit that there's someone there. Now, in our church, I regularly flow in that manifestation of interpretation. So uh, sometimes somebody gives something, and we'll, let, we'll wait for somebody in the congregation. And if they don't, I'll usually have the interpretation. Janie will give tongues. Sometimes I'll have interpretation. And then you can have, be in the middle of interpretation, kind of get to the end of interpretation, and step over into prophecy, and it just takes up a whole different level. Thing, you, you just change over. It's not no longer the interpretation was being spoken in tongues. You step over into prophecy. It's fresh. Not even, it's not even related. It may be related, but it's not the interpretation of what was said in tongues. You stepped over and began to prophesy from there. That happens. Sometimes, you know, tongues interpretation are kickstarts to a stronger flow of prophecy. So, the manifestation of tongues will be vocally. It will be inspired by the Spirit of God. It will say in the Spirit things in a language you don't understand. The interpretation of tongues is not the translation of tongues. There is a difference. Um, there are phrases that we use in different nations. If you translate them, they won't make a bit of sense. Did y'all know that? Um, there, are, there are things you can say. There's, there's things you can say in French. Uh, Salut, comment ça va? It, it, if, you, if you translate that strictly, it doesn't come out to mean, what's up? But that's what it means. What's up? What's going on? You know, what's up? You know? Um, or how about that? Uh, the answer sometimes is, come see, come ça. A little this, a little that. Well, strictly, which you, you, go, you kind of go, huh? Well, it means not much. You know, if you, the interpretation would be not much. A little this, a little that. Come see, come see. So, um, I remember um, when we were, <clears throat> when, I, you know, when I was uh, preaching in the, um, the French school one time, they, they, oh no, the, the, the school in Spain down in Barcelona, I was down in school, in, uh, Valvo School in Barcelona teaching, ministering there, and I said something. And, and the interpreter, see, they're an interpreter, not a translator. If you, get, if you go and try to preach with somebody who, who, who just, who knows proper English and translates what you say, they'll lose the meaning half the time. They have to be a little versed in idioms and colloquials so that they can take what you said, interpret it into oftentimes their own colloquial. It's not a straight translation. So that the people understand what you're saying. I mean, you go down there, I'm happy to pig and slop. That one gets lost. Okay? But if they know colloquial expressions and understand them, when they interpret that, they will come up with a, a, a something in their culture that would be comparative that will get the point across. So it is an interpretation, not a translation. Therefore, you could have someone give a five-minute message in tongues, and the interpretation could be two minutes, or it could be ten minutes. Because it is not a translation, it is an interpretation of what was said by the Spirit into the language that the people understand. Okay? Um, I remember... Um, they were giving, they were telling me when I was in Spain, they were showing some of their um, colloquials. 
you know, um, that, that one of the words was, let, was, was let, the, let the fly loose. And it had something to do with money, you know, uh, I forgot exactly what it meant, but it had something to do with, you know, that we would comparatively be along the lines of, you know, let go of the dollars or be, quit being so stingy or something. But theirs was a totally, I mean, if you translate that into English, if, if a Spanish guy came in and was preaching and used that and they translate, we'd be going, huh? So we had a good time talking about colloquials, <coughs> but you know, you know, when I get preaching sometimes, I'll be over there and say, I'm happy, it's happier than a pig and, pig and slop. And, and, and sometimes the, the interpreter would have to stop me, have me explain what I meant by that, so they could then relay it in an, in an interpretation to their people. And I'll tell you, the funniest thing was when I was in Estonia, the, fir the, uh, the first and second times I went, uh, well, the first time I went, they had, they had three students. They had uh, Hago, um, Riley, and, um, oh, I forgot her name now. Uh, but it was a third one. The, the third one, she spoke seven languages. She spoke Russian. She spoke Estonian. She spoke French, Spanish, Sweden. I mean, Finnish. I mean, she was just, you know, multi, multilingual. Well, I'd be preaching along, and all of a sudden, they, couple, the, the two other uh, interpreters would, st would go, no, 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 no. And they don't have a discussion in Estonian, of course. And I'm standing there, like, looking at them. And they get down, they go, it's okay. Go ahead. What it was, the, the, the guy that was interpreting didn't get what I said, but they did. And they used the wrong expression to say what I said. And so they'd all sit there and talk about it. Of course, the whole class understands the whole discussion. Because, no, 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 he said, you know, it's all in Estonian. And it's, you know, they're going after it. And then when they get done, they're good. Everybody in the class understood. Okay? Now, let me, get, let me show you how little they got one time. I was in, I was in um, uh, Heidelberg, Germany, um, teaching in the Bible school there. And, uh, and I'm going along, and I start, got talking about, and, and trying to make you understand, to interpretation of tongues is not translation of tongues. It's, it, it's an interpretation of the meaning. And I was preaching long, and I was talking about how the seed goes in the ground, and it's germinated, you know, it germinates and so forth. Well, the guy in translating, or actually, he's supposed to be interpreting, but he translated, hey, 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 when I said germinated, he said Deutsch something, you know, which meant German. And John Grunewald, the overseer, he spoke enough German, and he said, man, he's, really, he's got this real, all, some of y'all know John, he's been here at our church before. <clears throat> he's sitting out there, and he has this real dry, whatever, sense of humor, whatever, and, and he's, he's, no, 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 no. Because germinate means for the seed, we, we understand that word in English is to germinate, to begin to grow. It, it, it gets into the soil, it germinates, it begins to produce and grow. This guy had in his brain that it had something to do with Germany. So everything was Deutsch, 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 Deutsch. And he kept Deutsching it. And John says, no. And, they're all, and they took them 15 minutes to get that straightened out. And I said, you know, the seed goes in the ground and, and, and it begins to grow because it's, it's germinated. Deutsch, yeah, no. <laughs> By then I figured out what was going on. I kept hearing Deutsch. I knew he's talking about it being Germany. Had, in German, had nothing to do with that. And so you can be listening and the people give a tongue and you think you've got it figured out because you want, you know, this, this long or they may have said a word in English or something in there or whatever. And when it comes out, well, that wasn't, they didn't say what I thought I heard. It's because it's not interpretation. The person speaking by the Spirit of God in the interpretation will give the essence of what was spoken in tongue in a way you understand it. Okay? It won't be a translation. It won't be as long, may not have the same cadence, may not have the same uh, length. It's just, it is an interpretation. And you know, and, and how many have ever seen this? If you take English and like, especially some other language like Spanish or whatever, if you translate that, it can be three times as long. Okay? German, 15 times as long. And their words are like, you know, this long. They really are. They're, they're, they're just... Somebody said one time, there's no romantic songs in German. <laughs> just, they're not there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so it's an interpretation. Now, if you got a message in tongues, you got the interpretation, the essence of it. That 
Because it was, well, why couldn't that person just interpret without the tongues? Because it's interpretation of tongues. God created that, those gifts to function that way. If it's not that, then it's in prophecy. If there's no tongues and it's given by the special spirit, it's prophecy. Okay? Which is the same or equivalent to tongues interpretation. Now, let me ask you all something. If you've got two nickels and one dime, is a dime greater than the two nickels? Other than the arena of convenience, no. Do I have the same purchasing power? They're equivalent as to what they are. They're worth 10 cents. Okay? Now, as far as convenience, I mean, a pocket full of nickels would be better replaced by a pocket full of dimes. Isn't that right? And as far as convenience sake, but the fact of the matter is, two nickels equals a dime. They're equivalent. So tongues and interpretation of tongues can bring forth the exact same message that prophecy can. Part of this, I believe the Spirit of God understands the, the, tim uh, the timidness of people. That a lot of times people are more comfortable sp having someone step out in tongues first and then being yielding to prophecy, I mean interpretation, because somebody's already stepped out there and they're not out there hanging by themselves. And then it's easier to step out in tongues because nobody knows what you're saying anyway. If you miss it, they wouldn't know it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, God knows human nature. And so in giving a message in tongue and the interpretation of tongues, it, it will be equivalent to whatever someone who operates in prophecy or flows in prophecy or is manifest in prophecy that particular service would give. Um, prophecy would just be, be without the, uh, the tongues in front of it. Okay? They're all vocal. They're all inspired of the Holy Ghost. They are all spiritual manifestations of the Holy Spirit. There is not, they're not lesser or greater. They're, they, you know, some people say, you know, um, greater is, the Bible actually, this, now Paul said this, he said, greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh in tongues, except he interpret. So what's that mean? If the prophecy and interpretation comes, then prophecy is not greater. Now, someone just got up and spoke in tongues and didn't bring the, pro the interpretation, or it was not there, it will be greater. Why? Because the body's not edified with just a tongue. If there's a manifestation of tongues for public, public ministry, and there is no interpretation, then prophecy is greater because the body's edified with prophecy. It's except, Paul said very clearly, greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh in tongues, except he interpret. Then they're equal. Amen. Now, well, I only want to flow in the greater gift. Well, Paul said they're not greater if they got work together. And again, two nickels is equal to one dime. That's just the way it is. Two half dollars equals a dollar. Same thing. If I walk into a store and I got a dollar bill, another guy beside me has got two half dollars, the clerk's not going to go, well, I'll take his dollar, but I ain't taking your two half dollars. Well, he's a better customer than you because he brought a dollar and you only brought half dollars in. He's not going to tell him that. He don't care. It's equal. Amen. Now, the vocal gifts, <clears throat> as we said, are easier, to, are easier to yield to, are easier to misuse. And that's why Paul wrote this particular passage of Scripture um, in, order to bring, in order to bring order or for the purpose of bringing order to the church. Amen. Um, but if you study this whole passage, you'll find out uh, that what he, he's, he's talking about, not misusing, not being, um, not overrunning the service with your gift or, or manifestation of a gift through you. And really, it's kind of interesting because after he talks about this, he turns right around because you get people come and say, see, God doesn't want all this. And then he turn right around and say, let your women keep silent in the churches and they'll have some women preaching or co-pastor or whatever, but we don't let these gifts flow because they're out of order. Now, wait a second. Now, you've got you to do the whole thing. You gotta in other words, you really got to take it in, in the perspective of why it was written, okay? And there's, no different, there's not a different word for women or wife. You have to understand what was being written there. And I believe that. And actually, we know these are talking about wives. How do you know? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Talk about married women. All right? Okay? Told us in verse 39, covet the prophesy and forbid not. Forbid not. So I have a hard time with any church that says you can't speak in tongues in our services when the Bible says forbid not to speak with tongues. I have a hard time 
Well, we believe that, you know, God, well, what, what? Get me scripture where God did away with it. I got scripture where he tells you not to stop it. You give me scripture where it tells me where he did stop it. And I'll stop tomorrow and repent for ever doing it in the past. Amen? I remember one time uh, the kids were looking at some different Bible schools, and there was, a, there was a school down in Florida they looked at, and we looked at their, their page and said, and they actually, actually put this on their website. If you speak in tongues, this is not the school for you. Forbid not to speak with tongues. Another school not too far from here had, and I don't know if they changed it, but up until just, a, just recently, they used to have in there that um, if you come here, you'll have to promise, you have to sign a commitment. You won't speak in tongues while you're there or try to get anybody else to speak in tongues. Wow. Forbid not. Forbid not. Now, folks, I think we get on dangerous ground when we start overriding Scripture because we believe something that the Bible doesn't say is true. Well, who came up with that whole thing about all that passed away? Men. So I'm, I'm, until, until I can see it in the Bible, I'm not going to deny what God said, even if I don't like it. Amen? All right. So, Paul, Paul's, we, we talked about why Paul wrote that. But let's talk about the, the actual manifestation. Remember now, tongues for public ministry is for the purpose of being interpreted for what? The edification of the hearers. God wants the hearers blessed. God wants to speak to people. God does speak to his people through prophecy and through tongues and interpretation of tongues. He does speak to his people. Now, I don't think you need to line everybody up and, every, and, 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 and line, go down the line and have a word for everybody in the building. You know, people take, I've known somebody that used to take that scripture that said, uh, they may all prophesy one by one and used to teach everybody, you can just, and just go give everybody a word. And, 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 you know, I don't see that in the Bible either. Okay? I just don't see in the Bible where they lined them up and gave everybody a special word. You know? And, of course, 99% of the time, it was, it was, it was always wonderful. I mean, they're going to travel the way nations are going to be on the... Yeah, I, I remember my ordination service for Rama. <coughs> Dad Hagen started out, and about the first four people, he told them they were stubborn, hard-headed, wouldn't listen to their wife. I didn't want that word. <laughs> then he got over and just started laying hands on people, speaking over him in tongues, going down the line, thinking, whoo, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I was further down the line, and, I, and one of them was, was a friend of mine. Uh, she went to Raymond with me, her and her, her twin sister, and her and her, their husband passed right in California. And, and I remember when he got down to them and said that, I went, oh, brother. And then about the next, and then he says, and you, and then he kind of got over and speaking in tongues, and he just kind of went down the line laying hands on him. But I remember thinking about when I, I realized he wasn't going to be prophesying over anybody else. Because it didn't start out one of those meetings where you're great, you're wonderful, you're going to take the nations, you know. I mean, your church, you're going to have thousands, you're going to have churches, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It was your hard-headed, you won't listen to your wife, you're causing yourself trouble, you shouldn't be having, and, you know. Uh, the Holy Ghost ain't all, was that, was that edifying? Yeah, straighten you out, edify you. Don't you understand that edification can be correction, corrective? Amen. So, <clears throat> the purpose <clears throat> of public ministry is to build up the body. And this is as simple as it can be. It's not so many, you're like, woo, I love it when you speak in tongues, or I love it when you interpret. You just, it's just so awesome. I get chills. Yeah, I'm flowing deep. Well, no, no God don't care if you flow deep under that kind of, you know. No, it's not about you. It's never about you. And I, I, I'll be honest with you. Now, in, in talking about this, I, I love the manifestation of the Spirit. I love the move of the Holy Ghost. And I know some people don't like that terminology. How, whatever, how, let's not get caught up in semantics. Manifestations of the Spirit. Okay? Demonstrations of the Spirit. All right? We, we often refer to them as move, a move of the Spirit. And that's just a, a term we've kind of coined or used. But we're talking about a manifestation or a demonstration of the Spirit. 
Doesn't mean that he didn't wouldn't move in another service. Yeah. But he manifests himself differently at different times. God who at seven, sundry times and in divers manners. Look, uh, let me just give you a scripture real quick. Hebrews chapter 1. You know, it says here, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the prophet, fathers by the prophets. That means God did things in different ways. Didn't mean that he was withholding something from somebody when he did a different way somewhere else. He just did things in sundry, sundry, manner, uh, sundry times in different ways. God's not limited to one set way of doing something. Amen? That's Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. All right? But um, I remember there was, in our, in our church, we came out of, there was this lady, and she just loved to quote, unquote, prophesy. The only problem was every time she did it, you could have poured a big bucket of cold water on the whole congregation. And it had gotten to the point, it really wasn't about edifying the body. It was about everybody knowing she could flow in the gift of, quote, the gift of prophecy. I'm telling you, you just kind of went, <coughs> fingernails across the, the, the chalkboard. Because it was all the time, and it just wasn't God. I, I, I believe the pastor eventually had to talk to him. Say, so look, we want, you, we want you to be free to flow in the Spirit, but, you know, so when the prophesied to a guy to marry him, they got married. Yeah. Yeah, that's a self-serving prophecy. Yeah. No, it should bring edification to the body. Amen. So, we want, we want liberty. We want the flow. But at the same time, make sure you have an, you, you sense an unction. All right? So you sense an unction from God to, to yield to a spirit, to be, be a vessel in his hand. And let it bless the body. Amen. We, we need, now I'm going to say that we need more manifestations of the Spirit outside the pulpit in this church. We need people to step up to the plate. And I, and I don't mean you come to church, I'm going to step up to the plate. And probably, I'm, I'm talking about being yielded to the Holy Ghost, being submitted to the Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. And if you have an unction or a sense of something, yield to it. Amen. Tongues and interpretation are equivalent to what? Prophecy. Is prophecy greater than tongues? Yes. Except? And they say, except the interpret. Amen. All right. Therefore, tongues and interpretation of tongues is equivalent to prophecy. And prophecy is equivalent to tongues with the interpretation of the tongues. Amen. They are vocal manifestations for the purpose of what? Edification of the the church, the body. There you go. Church, the body. Same thing. She was taking good notes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Didn't know you get a pop quiz, did you? No. You need to listen better. That's the whole person we're here. That's why we're here. It's not so you can daydream and think about, you know, the Wizard of Oz. All right. Yeah.